The end of World War II was the end of the line for all but a few of the great combat planes, even the P-51 Mustang. Most of them are gone now, and the only place they fly is in the skies of our imagination. Of the more than 12,000 Mustangs produced during the war, only a hundred or so are still flying. One of these is 632 Niner Tango. By 1940, the British needed a new high-performance fighter plane to join the defense of England. North American Aviation won the contract, though the company had never built a fighter. It was the RAF who named it Mustang. Only 186 days after beginning the design, North American had a prototype in the air, and everybody knew it was something special. The first production models entered combat with the British in 1941. The U.S. Army Air Force began ordering it in 1942, and by the end of 1943, the P-51 was fighting on every front of the war and soldiered on to fight in Korea and other wars. The Mustang's enduring reputation isn't entirely a matter of its design or even its incredible service record. To appreciate the qualities that made the Mustang unique in its day and why the fascination with this great fighter continues to the present, you have to experience it in action. Okay, controls unlocked and free. Canopy release, okay. Battery on, generator on, radio master off, fuel pressure is up, mags on, prime and start. This Mustang was built in 1945 and served in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Landon Cullum of Wichita Falls, Texas purchased the plane in 1961 and restored it with the colors and markings of the 72nd Fighter Squadron 20th Air Force. This unit was based on Iwo Jima during the war. The plane is now flown by Landon and Jay Cullum. With the advent of the Mustang and other long-range high-performance fighters, the Army Air Force could finally protect its bombers on the long, deadly daylight missions over Europe and later the Pacific. The P-51 was also used in ground attack missions, photo reconnaissance, and even as a dive bomber. With a full load of fuel and ammunition, the P-51 could climb to cruising altitude, fly to targets hundreds of miles away, defend its bombers or attack ground targets, and return to base with fuel to spare. At normal power settings, 632 Niner Tango's engine consumes 60 gallons of fuel per hour, a gallon a minute. Normal cruise speed is 220 knots, or 253 miles per hour. At cruise power setting of 38 inches manifold pressure, 2400 RPMs, this P-51 has an endurance time of 3 hours and 20 minutes without drop tanks.
books, cooling doors open, flaps down, temperature's okay. Mixture's idle cut off. Switches off. This Mustang is a D model Mustang, the first P51 variant to feature the bubble canopy. The earlier models had framed cockpits. The D model is the most familiar and popular version of the Mustang and was produced in the greatest number. More than 8,000 D models were built by North American and its subcontractors from 1944 to 1947. The streamlined fuselage, advanced wing design, and beginning with the B model, the powerful Rolls-Royce Merlin engine gave the Mustang the capabilities to outperform its enemies. The engine that powers this P-51 is a 12-cylinder V-1650-7 Rolls-Royce Merlin built by Packard. The tightly fitted 1,650 cubic inch engine has a carbureted two-stage supercharger boosting output to 1,580 horsepower. Imagine the final months of the war in Europe. Every day, waves of P-51s fly sorties out of bases in England and the continent, escorting bomber raids and attacking airfields, rail and shipping targets in the heartland of Germany. Thank you. 
down and there's 250 knots. And uh, 6,500, here comes the power power's coming in. There's 
thrilling chaotic events of the war years have been flattened out into an orderly two-dimensional history. And it has been nearly four decades since the Mustang flew a combat sortie for the Air Force. But today, this great fighter flies another kind of mission. The P-51 Mustang is a messenger from that long ago war, a symbol for the spirit of its time and a reminder of what it was that made that time so special.